Hello there. So I've not done a video in the last few weeks. Uh, I've done basically like a bit of soul searching and got to the conclusion that the YouTube thing is just not worth doing anymore. Uh, I've double backed on that slightly. I I will still keep doing YouTube, right? But I'm not going to be doing videos which I don't fully have my heart in, like workshop modifications, adding lights to the workshop and stuff like that. I really don't want to make videos like that, but I just felt at the time that I was having to upload to please the algorithm, right? I'm not doing that anymore. My first paper run as like a 15 year old pays more in a week than YouTube does in a month, right? So the incentive to uh, create terrible videos and upload them only for them to bomb, it is not there. However, I do like making videos where I'm doing vehicle stuff and it, trying to overcome engineering problems. So uh, that is all I will be doing from now on. That probably means that the videos I upload will be fewer and further between them. You know, the gaps between them will be larger. That's the way it is. You know, I, I'm, I've, I've decided I'm not doing, it's not a blog. I'm not doing a weekly upload. This is what I've been up to this week. No, I'm only doing stuff I want to do. Totally selfish. It's my channel. Sorry. So it may not look like it, but I really am getting somewhere with the wiring. Switch gear starting to go in. I've got not a lot of wires left needing a home, basically. We've got instrumentation like rev counter, temperature gauge, etc. Then I've got some side light wires, headlight wires, and then these are for into the nose to run the radiator fan, intercooler fan, and intercooler pump, which is what I'm on with right now. So by intercooler, I mean charge cooler. I showed you in a video a few months back me basically modifying a, a charge cooler you can buy to fit onto the side of the Saab engine. This is it now. This is a spare engine I have, so I just use this to mock it up. Uh, there's basically a core inside there, which you can see through there. And then uh, water runs through from one into the other and then back into some sort of radiator. Uh, what I'm gonna do is add like a filler neck on top of one of these and then build metal like hose tails to come off each bit and then rubber pipes down into the nose of the vehicle where it will attach to. So in the nose there is this, right? Which I think this is a Triumph Sprint motorbike radiator. It's just an eBay cheapie which uh, I look like it looked like I could modify and it uh, was roughly the right size. So the idea is I'm going to chop that off, block that up. I've chopped all the brackets off on the top because I don't need any of them. And then what I'm going to do is run <clears throat> two of these, probably on the front side, side by side. And it, what's going to happen is that when you're in eco mode, Yes, that's right. Eco mode. With this switch pulled, this light will light up. It says eco, obviously for economy. And what that does is it feeds in a brake light input into the ECU. So the ECU thinks the brakes are on. What Trionic does is it will not allow you to go into APC or like boost solenoid controlled boost if it, the brakes are on. So with this pulled, this light on, and the 12 volt fed into terminal, I'll put it here, on the ECU. I've only got wastegate pressure, which is about half a bar. When you press that, this light goes off, the 12 volt gets disconnected from the ECU, and then I've then got it, uh, whatever I've mapped it to, probably about 1.2 bar. Whilst you're in eco mode, I've got a resistor that will run one of these fans at uh, about 10% power. So it'll just be trickling over, pulling a little bit of airflow through this charge cooler. When you push that button in and eco mode goes off, both of these fans they will then run flat out. The idea obviously being that as you run more boost, your charge temperatures go up, your inlet air temperature goes up. Uh, so by running the fans flat out, you bring them temperatures back down. And to flow it all, I'm going to fit this. This is a Mercedes auxiliary water pump, uh, basically like an electric motor with a 
centrifugal pump on it. I think I'm going to mount it about there, probably P-clip it, build a little bracket, mount it like so. So this will run about there. And then all these connections, I'm basically chopping these off and I'm going to make them into 19 millimeters to suit this. And then I'm going to do the same on the charge cooler. And then what I'm going to have is this fed into there, this goes up to the charge cooler, and this too goes to the charge cooler. And then for wiring it, I've just looked in my box of bits, one of my many boxes of bits, and a plug which is suitable. It's got too thin a gauge wire on it, but I'm pretty sure the terminals in there are these ones. This is ones which are all the Saab ECU. All the Saab wiring looms run these. These are called Junior Power Timer terminals. It's very worthwhile like finding out stuff like this because otherwise you'd have to cut it and then you'd just be soldering and it would look terrible. Whereas now I'm going to be able to pull that terminal out, re-terminal it with the correct size wire. As I mentioned in the previous video, I now have a CNC plasma table. It's a four foot by four foot extreme plasma. It's CNC, so basically it's hooked up to the computer and you can draw on that or you can even get files which somebody else has drawn off the internet, load them onto it, load your material onto it, basically press print. It's, it really is that simple. I looked at various different companies' plasma tables before I decided to buy this one. The main reason I bought this one from Extreme Plasma is Rob, the bloke who runs the company. The, he is so helpful, right? Bearing in mind, right, I did not buy this machine brand new. So you'd maybe think the guy's appetite to help me, somebody who's bought a second-hand machine, wouldn't, wouldn't be there versus a brand new machine. Oh, it is. I, I've rung him up and I've basically said, I want to do the course. I've just bought this machine and I really want to get my head around it. And he's saying, well, what is it you're struggling with right now? I can help you over the phone rather than you come all this way and do this course for all that money. I can help you now. And I'm just like, That's, I'm trying to give you money. This is, this is nuts. Like, he's so helpful. It's, it's, it's unreal. Such a nice guy. And 100% Rob is the reason I've bought this machine. Uh, I, I went there in Gloucester and I went and did a uh, half-day course with him. Get myself up to speed on the machine. I've got... I've got a bit of experience uh, using CNC mills and lathes and stuff. I'm not qualified, but I've, I've had a go. And uh, I had a go on this, and I, I, I was struggling a bit. And that half-day course, uh, yeah, total game changer. He basically showed me a few, a few things which I was getting myself totally muddled up on. Absolute game changer, that course. If, if you're going to get one of these, if you're going to get a CNC plasma table, extreme plasma. If you're in the UK, I don't know why you wouldn't, I don't know why you'd buy anything else, right? The price for it versus other machines and then the support is unreal. And uh, that half day course, if you do buy one of these and you think, I'll oh, work it out, just do the course, honestly. It's, there's a lot of DIY and how-to videos on the machine already, but there's so much information that somebody with a simple mind like myself, I found it was quite easy to get ahead of yourself, basically. I know this, I don't need to listen to this. Uh, but yeah, this course changed, changed everything for me, really. I've done some steel with it before, but now I'm gonna try some aluminium. I've got a three millimeter piece of aluminium sat in it. And then I'm gonna draw up on the machine some brackets, which are gonna suit the charge cooler radiator. Uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so this is where we have etch a sketch. Just gonna make it up as I go along. I want a width of 25 mil, and then a height of 
no 100 nice just draw on another one on top this is one of the best things for me right I used to use a feature cam to draw stuff right and you used to have to like transpose or whatever it was called so let's say I want to move that over a bit you used to have to basically give it coordinates to move it over whereas on this one you literally just come up here and I just want it let's say I want it to go five mil it just does it let's say I wanted to copy it and go up it just does it unreal so let's have a look at this 25 mil would be nice probably get 25 mil and then I'll so I'll like fillet it so it's like a voluptuous T you'll see let's trim that line then let's select two lines and radius let's go 20 mil radius nice Round all these edges. Nice. Now I'm gonna measure this here. Pretty sure it's 25. Yep, 25. What I'm gonna do then is offset this by 12.5. I'm gonna copy it. Nice, then that gives me a center line, and then I'm gonna draw on some holes for. Uh, mounting it Okay, so this is what I've drawn up the uh, this is gonna go on the side of the radiator and I'm gonna weld to all that then I'm gonna add a bend at the top there and uh, These are gonna bolt holes are gonna bolt it to the van I'm gonna build two of these Let's give it a go. So once you've drawn it all up you then come into sheet cam import what i've just imported into cooler rad bracket metric yada 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 ah what have i done wrong there we go i i'm not sure basically what i did i had it set up as individual lines and then uh, what i did was select all the individual lines so each radius each straight line and then i Group them together and then saved it again and then it, and it came up saying these are on multiple Z axis as in multiple depths Do you want to put them on one? I said yes saved it and then I've just opened it and it's looking fine. So happy days Okay, so what I've just done there is I've done nesting and then I've managed to rotate the part I was struggling to work out what it was, but if you press these two tool uh, buttons here You can rotate the uh, one you're duplicating so I've duplicated it, put it nice and tight to it, not to waste material. And then you go down here, and then you click Operation, and then you select the layer, which is the layer, the only one there. And then you tell it to cut. I've told it it's aluminium. I should be good to go. Then you run, you press this P into cooler rad bracket. And it tells you then, this is post process. It tells you if there's any issues, there isn't. And then when I go into Mac 3, it should be there, ready to go. Alright, there it is. Cutter is off. And I'm going to try and do a dry run. Hover over the stop button. Okay, good job I did that because I think it did the whole thing twice. I think I've made a mistake where I've basically duplicated them or added in the layers. I think it does the same thing bloody twice. Let me look into this. Okay, let's give it a go. Let's click start. This is the first time doing aluminium. Anything could happen.
okay, version one didn't work out, uh, it dragged the metal, so I'm going to have to hold that down a little bit better, and also uh, I could do a redesign in it slightly, because it cracks if I try and do a very tight bend on it. So I've got some plans, I'll redo it and try it again. looking much better. So I turned the machine up to 40 amps, it was on 30 and it was giving a bit of a raggedy cut uh, and I redesigned this slightly. The back end of these holes, I'm not sure they came out a bit bizarre, I've just opened them up with the deburring tool and this is where it stopped as well. Um, I don't know if it fell and sort of cut through it at the same time but things I can improve on for sure. So these are the first ones that I've now battered. Uh, tried to bend it in the vise and it does crack, right? So what I tried then was bending it over a uh, round bar of steel. And that comes out pretty nice. So let's try this one. So I've got this over here. I made this ages ago, uh, like a sort of brick press thing. One piece of angle iron pushes into another, like so, giving you a bend. But I've just found if you push this into a piece, you can get a nice radius on it. Let's try that. Here are the finished articles for the brackets. These are going to go like so. Well lit about there larger overhang on the front to take the weight of the fans but uh, yeah plenty plenty strong enough lovely jubbly there's them pair I even cut out a little round piece to allow me to weld onto that normally when I do this sort of thing I get use a hole saw cut out something the right size the bit that you cut out weld in and then fill the hole in but this is you know this is just lazy isn't it Bloody brilliant. Uh, also on the bottom where I am going to fit my pump with the P-clip, I've done this bracket here. Uh, just going to go roughly about there. So what I want to do now is that these fans are going to fit on the front and there's a little space in between them where I could do something terrible like a flat piece through there and just bolt them to it or I could try and make additional studs or even worse I could use them standard like cable tie type setup but uh, let's see what I can draw on the machine I'll just rattle through this pretty quickly you basically tell it to draw a rectangle and then you can input the measurements uh, you desire width and height etc then I knew the fans were a certain di diameter so I drew some circles in for that and then basically everything from there you just offset in all the time you, you it's, it's on a grid so it snaps to the center and uh, yeah just literally offset in each way until uh, you get something that looks good and then it didn't really like cutting the letters out they're supposed to be I think like two lines basically it's supposed to sort of it's not supposed to just cut through them, it's supposed to like cut out, like you're supposed to have a T-shape cut out of that, which is impossible, the machine's not got that finesse. But that definitely says turbo, doesn't it? And that definitely says 2.3. The backside's messy, uh, as you can see the aluminium's just like absolutely melted and it's blowing through it. So I'd imagine if, you, if I wanted to do letters or that finer detail, I'd need probably steel and larger details I'd imagine. Who knows, but for this it's bloody perfect. 
now to get it welded up. Okay, so as per usual, getting totally inconsistent results welding aluminium. That one came out like so. This one much better. Uh, this one, little side bracket. Crap. That side a bit better until the bottom looks a bit crap. Just tack these into position so I could try it in the nose of the van. I'm happy with where it sits. Now I've just turned these on the lathe. Terrible finish because I've got no auto feed on it anymore because I bloody broke the gears on the feed gearbox. So the idea is this one like so. Feed in into the pump and then this one like that. And the idea of this is that I can now run three quarter inch or 19 mil internal diameter hose everywhere, all the way up to the charge cooler, rather than doing adapters to go from different sizes everywhere. Right, let's tack these in place. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is the finished article. Uh, lots of inconsistent TIG welding by myself. Uh, it's just, yeah, just not being a very good TIG welder, that's what it is. Uh, some of it goes well, some of it doesn't. And I don't really seem to change much, but uh, yeah, some of them come out all right. It seem, it, I, I think it's gonna be waterproof or uh, leak proof. If it's not, I'll go over the welds again. But yeah, so this is what I have. Triumph Sprint ST, I think, motorbike radiator, two seven inch fans, uh, some homemade plasma table cut brackets, uh, reduced down to 19 mil, which is what the pump is. The pump is a Mercedes Benz auxiliary water pump. And the little brackets I've added on, like this one, is to hold a, in, a resistor. So it's got a heat sink on it. That's going to be mounted under there. I'm actually waiting for a larger one to come in. And what that will do is on eco mode, the fans will run at a reduced uh, speed. And then when eco mode is off and you're at full boost, these fans both run flat out. So, yeah, happy with how it came out. It's, this is... Uh, this is the internet, so only good things get shown, so maybe other people wouldn't be impressed, but I'm not asking you to be impressed. I'm just, uh, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Let's give it a test on the floor. So here's my very high-tech test rig. Uh, all the pipes are just pushed on, so there's no Jubilee clips or anything on, so everything leaks, but uh, the pump is flowing. Both fans are running. Good stuff. I actually had a bit of a hard time getting the pump to flow properly. So in this setup, probably the height of that, the charge cooler is going to be about this height in relation to that which I think is a nice head of water for the pump. Uh, and until I gave it a little head of water, give it quite a bit this time, uh, I couldn't get the pump to bleed up properly, but I don't think I'm gonna have a problem once it's in the vehicle. I'm gonna call it there on this video. Um, catch me in the next one where I'm gonna be carrying on with getting the Saab 2.3 turbo running in my UAS 452. Thanks for watching, bye.